wife pulled the switcheroo over here. <laughs> this side, left this side. She may be. She may have an alt in her heart. I guess some people on this side. I don't know. Maybe not. You, have, you may have to change your seat to somewhere different. That's a fact. We're sure glad that some of you are back. And hopefully next week we'll have the rest of the crowd back from all their journeys. A lot of journeys. Praise the Lord. I started uh, messages on faith and I left some of them off till more people got back. And I'm handing you all three together so we can kind of review a little bit. Some of you weren't here, and so you'll have all three. And I'm, I'm glad that I can put them all together for you so you can keep them that way and you can look back on these principles and possibilities of faith. Yes, that would be good. Uh, I'll quickly go through some of the principles of the ones we've done and do it real quickly and not get into some of the scriptures of it. What we've actually done, little by little, we've been through Hebrews 11. Today we'll finish up with Hebrews 11 pretty much. But we started with that as well. Uh, the principle in Mark eleven twenty two, Jesus said, have faith in God. And in verse 6 of chapter 11, he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the two scriptures I should give to review is Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And I think it's good when you read the Scriptures to read it out loud because you're listening to your own voice. You're hearing the Word of God. And then in Romans 12, 3b in that verse, according as God has dealt to every man, speaking of every believer, He's given a measure of faith to us. And we grow that faith. I mentioned to you when I first started these messages that the word believe and the word faith appears a little less than 400 times throughout the scriptures. It may vary according to what translation you're looking at, but it, it's a lot of times the word faith is a noun, the word believe is a verb, but we're talking about essentially trusting God and faith being the same. Let's go through some of the principles based on Hebrews 11 and Daniel 6, actually. True faith will always be tested. Can I say amen about that? Amen. True faith will always prove adequate. Boy, I like that. And we see that found to be true in the scriptures of Hebrews as well as Daniel. True faith will always bring deliverance, either this life or the life to come. It always brings deliverance. We see that in Hebrews 11 as well. And true faith will always, everybody say always, always. glorify God. And then based on 2 Kings 4, 8 through 37 and Hebrews 11 as well, we need a great faith to trust God when we cannot trace what He's doing or His workings. Sometimes we just don't, we're sort of in the dark. I mean, I think Marilyn Hickey said, you got to trust God in the dark, what he told you in the light. Amen. Sometimes this, we have to deal with that. Amen. So it, we need great faith to trust God when we cannot trace his workings. We need great faith to trust God when the situation becomes desperate. We know in our lives, and Joan and I are our life together, there's been some times where we were desperate before God to get an answer, to find direction. We need great faith to discern God's will and to be able to pray the prayer of faith. The Bible speaks of the 
prayer of faith. We need a great faith to persevere until prayer is fully answered. We need a great faith to secure a testimony for the glory of God. How many want to glorify God with your life and with your faith and with your faithfulness? We glorify God. Yes. And down below, I put, we need an audacious, bold faith in God. And here are four really great principles that play out in our lives. And, it, and these principles play out in business as well as our Christian life. Business people can learn from this. You need faith to believe there is a way. You've got to believe that there is a way when there may not seem to be a way. There's always a way. God provides a way, an answer. We need faith to believe there is a way. Our church needs to continue to plead that there's a way that God can make this six acres a healing center for broken people. And it's not far from getting fulfilled. There's not too many weeks before they'll be working in that area end of our building to make room. And Jennifer, the director, is already receiving calls from people that may be needing this. And Joan took her out for lunch this past week. And it's, it's exciting to see what's, what's coming. We need to believe and have faith there is a way for these things to come about. We need faith to see what other people overlook. Sometimes I'm amazed how I thought I could see and I thought I knew what I was looking at. And somebody comes along and just blows me right out of the water. They show me something that I just did not see. I'm always amazed by that. Because I thought I was seeing what I needed to see. But no, there's been numbers of times in my life uh, I had tunnel vision or I had blindness to something that I needed to see. It took somebody else to come alongside. A lot of times it's my wife helping me out. I think you need to listen to your wife sometimes. She might see stuff you don't see. Write that down. Write that down, everybody. Write that down. <laughs> you need faith to believe there's a way. You need the faith to see what others overlook. And this is very important. You need faith to take a risk. Our church experienced that. We had a very successful daycare for well, 17 years here. And the last number of years, it was very, very successful and was doing very well. But the church made a decision. They wanted to do a different kind of ministry, something that was more a New Testament style of ministry. And that's what we had made that decision to do. We took the risk. And I believe eventually we will see the payoff. It's just taken a while and you've got you to be patient after you take that risk to see it come about. And then the fourth principle is so good. You need faith to overcome opposition. And sometimes the people that are opposed a little bit later will become your best friend. I took a church one time, met a lady, my first service there. And I told Joan when we were riding to go eat somewhere, I said, honey, that woman's going to be a problem for us. I said, she's going to be a real, she's going to be hard to handle, that lady is. And within a matter of four or five months, she became my best friend. She was an older lady. She was quite, probably 30 years older than me. But she was something, she was a she was an interesting lady. She was a very interesting lady. But she became very close to us and we wound up preaching her home going while we were there. Listen, you need faith to be able to deal with opposition and know that God can turn things around. Then number two message, Jesus says, have faith in God when our hearts are crushed or broken. When we feel overwhelmed, and sometimes a lot lately we feel that way, overwhelmed. Sometimes we feel our world is falling apart. i tell you the truth. That's for sure. Jesus said when you have these feelings and you see these things happening, you just got to have faith in God. You got to do it. And I'll just go through the principles. We must always have faith in our Father's providence. For we know the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. 
whatever the Lord pleases, He does in heaven and earth. God is sovereign. And we must have faith in our Father's providence. Providential ways. We must always have faith in our Father's power. The Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And He sustains everything by His mighty power of His command. Oh, yes. We must always have faith in our Father's nearness. I am the God that's near at hand. Listen, God is always here. God is always near. And sometimes I know you and I have both felt like he was a million miles away, but he wasn't. I think I love the song that Gary Paxton wrote. Joan loved it for many years. I'm sure she still does. He was there all the time. When you didn't know it, when you couldn't feel him, he was always there all the time. We must have faith in our Father's stability. And He will be the stability of your time. Boy, do we need that today. We're in a mess here. We've had the biggest display of deception going on in the last weeks. It's unbelievable. Man, the stability. We need the stability of God for our times. Only God is stable. The rest of the world has gone crazy. We've got to keep our faith in Him. And He is the wisdom and knowledge and the fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. He'll keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on Him. We must always have faith in our Father's faithfulness. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith, our hope, for He who promised is faithful. Yes. Yes. Go on. Finishing up with Hebrews 11, 13 through 22. The trust of faith. The promises are received as banknotes, which are as good as cash. The telescope of faith. Unbelief says seeing is believing, but faith is believing is seeing. The promises seen are far off, but they're yet seen and believed, even though they're far off. The testimony of faith, verses 14 through 16. Faith declares by his own action what his aim is. They came out, they declared the separation of man of faith and wherefore the consequent blessing that came from coming out. The trial of faith. Faith looks at God's presence and power when tried. If the Lord does not deliver us out of the trial, he will be with us in the trial. Come on. The thoughtfulness of faith. Faith looks not on its own thing, but it looks out for others. We're, we, we care about other people more than ourselves. It's not self-centered, it's others. When we have faith for others and thoughtfulness of our faith. An attack of faith has got an interesting description. Faith reverses. Faith, I say, faith reverses can be God's direction. There are sometimes I had faith for something I was believing God for, and God said, no, I'm going to do, it, do something different. And it turned out to be much better. It was almost like the way Sears and Roadbook did years ago when they had the catalog. If you, this was when we were young, we first started out. If you ordered a wash machine, a certain model, and they didn't have it, they'll see you one bumped up a little bit better. That's the way Sears did that years ago. If they didn't have the one you ordered, and stop, they'd send you an upgrade, no extra charge. Maybe they stopped doing that, that's why they're not around. <laughs> Maybe it broke, broke them to do that. But anyway, listen, if, if God changes things and, and you're believing God for something and it doesn't work out quite like you're believing for, God has a way of making things better than what we, in our limited vision, can see. So the tack of faith Sometimes it has to do with those reverses. And the tranquility of faith, verse 22, the thought of the future fills man with unbelief and fear. But a man of faith can speak of the future with perfect peace and perfect calm. Because we've read the back of the book, people. Yes, it is. I mean, he's read the back of the book and know who wins. Amen. Now, finally, you may want to get a pen out because I'm going to give you a few things that are not on the notes. You may want to write them down, maybe. So we'll get you a pen out. Today, entitled, because uh, Barb helped me change the title when I was here at Wednesday, 
You see, I, I first, when Joe and I were typing, when we did this message before, I, I, when we typed it, I said, faith made me do it. I was kind of doing a Flip Wilson thing where he said, the devil made me do it. I was thinking about old Flip Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. The devil made me do it. Well, I, I titled it first, faith made me do it. Well, then when I got here, I said, Barb, can you type out something? i got to change my message title a little bit. I thought this would be a little softer, a little bit different. Faith made them do extra <laughs> amazing things. It's a little bit different. They moved them to do amazing things. Something that you may want to write down that, that I didn't put in those I thought of later, something I have had, I must not have so much I've done with this teaching of faith, and that's why I put all this together. But this is something you may want to write down at the top where you can find a blank spot. Faith is the link. Faith is the link that binds our nothingness to his almightiness. Faith is the link that binds our nothingness to his almightiness. And then another one I put on my top of my page. Faith in God sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Faith in God sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. And you know 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he says we walk by faith and not by sight, or not by things we presently see. We walk, one of the translations puts it that way. We walk by faith, and not by things we presently see. Now let me give you the rendition that's in your notes there that I really like. We are, one rendition of the Greek goes like this, of 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We are moved by faith, for we guide our lives by faith and not by what we see. Listen, we can see a lot of stuff that can really wipe us out. But Paul is saying, first of all, we're moved by faith. And he says, for we guide our lives I forgot what translation I, I got that from my 26th translation Bible, but it was a good translation. For we guide our lives, or we walk by faith and not by things we presently see. Our lives are guided by our faith. That makes sense, doesn't it? Our lives are guided by our faith. One translation put it this way. And this is good. It is faith that controls us. It is faith that controls us. Listen, we walk in the Spirit. We walk with the Lord. We walk in the Spirit. And this translation from the Greek says, it is that faith that guides us. It is that faith that controls our lives. I mean, have, in your life at times have felt like that your faith was guiding you and your faith was controlling your action, controlling your thoughts. Faith moves us. Faith guides us. Very powerful. And then Paul, going down into verse 14 of the same chapter, 2 Corinthians, this is interesting. I put these two together because I really like this. Paul says we are constrained by love. The love of Christ constraineth us. It moves us. It, it's a force. God's love is a force in our life that causes us to do amazing things. We'll see that when we go down a little further. Look at Hebrews 11, 33 and 34. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, 
wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions. They became a pillar for Daniel, a nice soft pillar. Quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed violent in the fight, and turned the fight of the armies of the aliens. It's a little strange word in the old of the Greek, speaking of foreigners. Now, what has the love of God and faith made you do lately? That's the question. What has the love of God constrained you to do? What has faith moved you to do lately? Has the love of God constrained you and compelled you to forgive somebody? It's hard to forgive. Has faith and the love of God moved you and constrained you to do something that was not easy to do, but you did it anyway? That's a good question to ask ourselves on a regular basis. What has the love of God and faith made us do lately? What has it done? What has it done to, for us? So Miss Wigglesworth says, I am not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by what I believe. One of those almost 400 times word believe in faith. Now putting 1 Corinthians 5, 7 and 1 Corinthians 5, 14 together, faith in God's love compels us, impels us, I had to make sure that was the right word. I, I was thinking about something impelling us, but it's speaking of a force that moves us. For faith and God's love compels us, impels us. It drives us to do things, amazing things, impossible things. As I said, Christ's love controls us. The love of Christ, what any be actually puts it this way, the love of Christ leaves me no choice. Listen to that. That's the NEB translation. The love of Christ leaves me no choice. That can help. God's love. How many bask in God's love? If you never accomplish any great things in life other than being loved by God, that should be something that you relish in and you enjoy. The love of God leaves me no choice but to serve Him, to love Him, and to love others as well. As we talked about in 1 John last week, George has been doing a great job on 1 John. you got to come for that. Now it's interesting that Abel was moved by faith to worship and please God and offer a better sacrifice. He speaks of that. Listen, when you look at Hebrews 11 and you look at these heroes of faith, they use, in other translations, they use a word called prompted. And it would be like this. Abel was prompted by faith. Prompted by faith. Okay, let me give you a scene. Prompting. Someone, uh, the, the high school or the elementary school, maybe the elementary school, is doing a play up on the platform. And the teacher, she's behind the curtain. And she's got kids up there trying to say their part. And so she's behind the curtain, prompting them, okay? Okay, now, you know, I mean, uh, she, she, she's not seen. And hopefully she's hoping she's not heard. But she's, she's prompting the kids to get their part out. Listen, in the, in the Greek, Greek in the translation of different words that are used, Abel was not only moved, but he was prompted, prompted by God, by the Holy Spirit, to worship, to please God, to offer a better sacrifice. And what's, what's, the, what's the example of that? Real faith always looks for an opportunity to worship and please God. Come on. Real faith always looks for an opportunity to worship and please God. I was on my way to the dump yesterday and I had a car full of stuff. 
I've been cleaning out my garage. Joe got me. Joe got me excited. He said he's getting his house in order. I figured, well, maybe I should get mine in order too. So I've been cleaning out my garage, which got really bad. There's no way you can't. You couldn't pull a motorcycle in, much less my car. <laughs> then I, yeah, I'm ashamed of this because I know you keep your garage deep. So we, I, I hold a lot of stuff. But I put on Marty Goods. He's a psalmist that sings the psalms. And on my way to the dump, old Marty was singing the psalms of David. And I, all the way to the dump, I just worship the Lord. Listen, we should always be looking for an opportunity to give our worship to God. Even in the car, if you're by yourself, there's ways we can talk to God and still pay attention to our driving, hopefully. Enoch is spoken of in verse 5 of chapter 11 of Hebrews. Enoch was moved by faith to walk and commune with God. One translation puts it this way. Enoch, faith led Enoch. Faith led to Enoch's removal from the earth to heaven. W-E-Y, way translation. Faith led Enoch's removal from the earth to heaven. Is faith going to help in your removal from the earth to heaven? I hope so, because that's how we're going to get there. By our faith and trust in God. Maybe a little different than Enoch, but it's still the faith that will get us from earth to heaven. Noah, in verse 7, was moved by faith to build an ark. People would come to him, what you doing? I'm building an ark. What's an ark? Well, you know, it was interesting. I didn't watch that TV version that was done about the ark being built. I was, I was kind of amused by that, you know, the acts of kindness and all that, and how people thought he was a nutcase. But anyway, I'm sure that Noah, people thought he was a nutcase too, but he was moved by faith to build an ark, to save the human race. And he was a senior citizen, folks. God used a senior citizen to save the world. Come on. We're never too old, Dennis. We can still do this. Come on. We're never too old. Right, right, Pastor Ezra? Never too old. You're a good example of that. Yes. It says in one translation, Noah was divinely instructed concerning things not yet seen. Noah was divinely instructed to things not yet seen. And we, we read the prophets, don't we? We read the prophets. We read the things about the last days. And we kind of see them not too far away, don't we? We see things happening. He was moved. By faith. And when we went to the ark in Kentucky, I'll tell you, you know what I came away from? Building the ark in that time with limited technology was absolutely, totally a God thing. Had to be. Otherwise, it'd be impossible to do that. It was hard to do it in modern time. They went and got trees from all over the world trying to build that thing. It was a God thing. No question about it. Gideon was moved by faith to take on the enemies of God's people in Judges chapter 6 through 8. Who, me? Who are you speaking to me? Yeah, Gideon, I'm speaking to you. I love the phrase when it says, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. He included him in that. That's, a, that's an amazing scripture verse in Judges 6 through 8. Verse 30, Joshua was moved by faith to lead God's people to victory over Jericho. And the walls of Jericho fell and collapsed at the sound of the trumpets. And as they broke their jars, and as they went around seven times, and most scholars look at it, the walls were so wide that Essentially, they didn't just fall down. They actually had to sink down into the ground 
Otherwise, there'd still be a wall there. If they fell over, it'd still be a wall. If the ground just swallowed them. They were gone. Faith. Joshua was moved by faith to lead God's people to victory over Jericho. David was moved by faith to take down Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, who defied the people of God. And listen, verse, verses 35 through 37 says, Some were tortured, some were stoned to death, refusing release. They refused to, to be released. Because the release was based on they had to deny their faith. And they said, I can't do that. How many have us read stories of missionaries who had at the point of a sword? You can live if you'll deny your faith. And they do not deny their faith and they die as martyrs. Yes. And some of these died as martyrs. But it says of them in the verses, the latter verses of Hebrews 11, these all these all having obtained a good report through faith because God had something better for them. Amen. Listen, if it doesn't work out quite like you're thinking, I guarantee you God's going to upgrade and there'll be something better that will happen. Let's finish this out. Paul was constrained. Nehemiah, Ezra were moved to rebuild the wall in the temple in Jerusalem under very difficult circumstances. That is in Ezra and in Nehemiah. Ezra 3, 1 through 3, Nehemiah 2. You can find that story. They were moved by faith and they had to have a sword in one hand and a trial in the other. Building that wall. Sword to fight off Sambalot and the enemies of the people of God and build the wall, fight the fight, build the wall, fight the fight. Faith gave them that power to do that. Uh, let's go to our back of the page. Zacchaeus, he, he, he climbed a tree because he wanted to see Jesus. He was motivated to climb a tree so he could see Jesus. His desire was that strong. George Mueller, great story. Come on, George Mueller was a great story. He was moved by faith and love to feed 2,000 orphans every day. There were times in the stories of George Mueller where he would set the kids down. They had no food in the kitchen, not a bite of food. But he would have them sit down. They'd put the plates out. They'd put the forks and spoons out. And they would have someone to pray. Now, would you pray over our lunch today? And there's no food in the house. There's not a, a smidgen of food. And while they're praying for God to bless the food that's not there in the house, a truck pulls to the back door of the kitchen. This happened numerous times. A man of faith, George Mueller. David Wilkerson was moved by faith to go to New York City to confront the gangs with the gospel. The rest is history. He said this, and I love this. If you experience something that breaks your heart, maybe you're the one to do something about it. Think about that. If you experience something that breaks your heart, maybe you're the one that he may use to do something about it. After all these years, now that was way, way back. When I first started the ministry, my father sent support to two ministries, to David Wilkerson and to Billy Graham. Our family supported those two ministries. Way back when I was really young. We're talking about when he went to New York City as a, as a Pennsylvania preacher of a country church and went to the games. Think of what's happened since he did that. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have come to faith. Hundreds of thousands have been made whole who've been broken by sin. Listen, and now after all these years, it's come full circle to Spring Lane Road. Six acres right here. All those years, all those hundreds of thousands of people. What he did is going to happen here, even though it's been many, many years ago that he did that act of faith. Think about it. Think about it. Ordinary people from all walks of life are doing extraordinary things because they are moved by faith. And they're constrained by love to do impossible things. 
Joan and I have been moved by faith and loved by so many things. And impossible things we've tried. Hard things. And sometimes crazy things we try. But God felt sorry for us. Or either our faith was strong. I don't know. Sometimes a little bit of both. We had strong faith. And I think God kind of felt sorry for us and just helped us out. But I'll tell you this. It's been an adventure of a lifetime. Front row seats. And quickly, let's finish out Hebrews 11, 23 through 31. The courage of faith. Moses' mother, not afraid of the king's command. I said Moses, Moses' mother, Jochebed. Moses' mother was not afraid of the great Pharaoh king because she hid him. The declarations of God are always to be regarded before the decrees of man. I said the declarations of God are more powerful than the decrees of man. It's called the courage of faith. And in verses 24 through 26, we see the choice of faith. The choice of faith. By faith, Moses choosing to suffer the affliction with the people of God that enjoy pleasures of sin for a season. He chose that. The choice of faith. And then we have the calmness of faith. Through faith, he left Egypt. Faith caused him to leave Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Listen, when you have, we know what it is to look into the face of God, we shall never feel the frown of man. When we know what it is to look into the face of God, we don't fear what man has to say. Come on. What about the covering of faith? Verse 29. The blood of the atonement is faith protection. I said the blood of the atonement is faith protection. And the presence of God is his confidence. He says in Exodus 12, 13, And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The confidence of faith. The word of God was given. The word of God was spoken. God spoke the word through Moses. And that became Israel's authority. I said the word of God is Israel's authority. The word of God is your authority and my authority. Come on. God spoke. The word of God. God spoke was Israel's authority for crossing the Red Sea. Hence they had confidence. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The conflict of faith. Verse 30. The battle is the Lord. By faith the walls of Jericho came down. Listen. It's called the confidence of faith. It's called the conflict of faith. What's the conflict of faith? It's when you try to do it yourself. When you try to do it yourself. Well, maybe I can help God out. Maybe if I could just help him out. I mean, those when you try to help God out, it don't turn out too well. It don't turn out too well. God doesn't need your help in certain matters. He just needs you to trust Him and believe in faith and let Him work it out. The battle is the Lord's. Say it together. The battle is the Lord's. And then in closing, confession of faith, verse 31. Rahab's action proclaims her faith. By faith she believed God. She believed in His power. She did not perish as those who refused to believe. The confession of faith of Rahab. And then I close with this on the bottom. I want you to think about this very long. How long has it been since you and I were constrained by love and moved by faith to do something great, to do something difficult, to do something amazing, to do something for the Lord. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I'm glad because I'm tired already. I need to finish up because I'm worn out. We went through a lot of stuff, didn't we? But I want you to have those three messages together, those principles, and have them, keep them together. 
Let's stand together. Have faith in God. Come on.
It does help to see. God. <laughs> <laughs> you can play it by note for sure. And it all boils down to my, my vision is to be bossed up, man. Stop, you got it wrong. We give thanks to them. Any request? Yes. Praise God. 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 Well, I'll tell you what, Pastor, we would love you if you came in your pajamas. We'd be all right. <laughs> we would we'd be thankful if you just came. God, God gave you the victory today. You're here. Yes. Yes. I said this morning, I said this night, before this day, I'm going to meet this The grace of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Any other requests anybody have? There's a, there's a gentleman, uh, his name is Lane Willard, that uh, Ed and Nancy and I have known for quite some time when we all used to uh, attend uh, Carpenter United Methodist Church. We're not exactly sure what happened, but he and his granddaughter were riding on a four-wheeler, and we, we think that he had a heart attack. And, um, and he is now uh, at uh, trauma intensive care in uh, UNC at Chapel Hill. And the doctors have told the family that they don't hold much hope for him is because of the fact that he's uh, went such a long period of time uh, that uh, his brain was depleted of oxygen. It's, his brain is now swollen. But they cannot do the surgery that they would normally do to relieve that pressure. So he is just lying there on life support and uh, we are Hundreds of people are, very, are praying right now uh, all over in this area. People who know Lane um, and his family. And uh, so um, I'd like to lift him up to you as well uh, for a miracle yes. and a testimony yes. to yes. the power of God uh, to change things that we see as impossible. And yes. it's not changeable. Yes. Um, so. Dave's brother was on life support for a whole month. 9-11 happened. He didn't even know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. God brought him out of that. He didn't turn into full plug. Yeah. At this point, he said, no. We are not going to pull the plug. We're still going to live in right. And God brought him out of that. He made him Georgia. Yeah. And he had worked for Dave's brother. Y'all get back and take care of your family. God's not ready for me yet. <laughs> <laughs> she was in her 30s then. And she lived to get into her 80s. Our hands are in the hands of God. Yes, that's where we have uh, placed Lane. 
hands in God's hands. We'll trust Him and for uh, that. Heavenly Father, we bless you and give you thanks, Lord. And we, we place these prayer requests and these praises in your hand and give you thanks, Lord, for who you are. We know that you can create miracles and things that we, we know that's just not possible from our human trans respect, dear God. But you can do it if it's your will. Otherwise, we know that uh, those that are, are lying there in the hospital is a child of God and will be with you for eternity. But Father, we just pray for the family that is going through a very, very difficult time. Uh, and we pray for them to receive love and care from all their loved ones around about them. Lord, I just thank you for sending Ed to help Brother Ed throw the shirt this morning. And uh, Sister Joan can sing. And we really believe, uh, Lord, that you're moving. You bring the right person in the right time to do whatever is needed. Yes, we believe that. And Father, we just pray for all God's children. Yes. We need you in so many different ways. For relationships, for financial matters, for uh, you know, getting from here to there. We thank you for those that have returned to us uh, after visiting family, and we pray for others that will be traveling as well. We don't take it for granted. And we give you praise and glory and honor for who you are, the mighty God who spoke this world into existence. Yes. And uh, we believe that with all of our heart and our dependence, our faith and reliance is upon you. Yes. And we give you all the glory in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.